Are you having fun in your business? I mean, it should be fun, right? Well, sometimes the fun gets overlooked when you're dealing with the have-tos, the complexities of being your own boss and actually running the show. It's my goal that this, the Fun Business Fun Money Podcast, can help reignite your spark of fun by providing tips, tools, insights, and inspiration so you can enjoy running your business in the simplest, easiest, most fun way possible. I'll be sharing practical tips and ideas that you can implement immediately, along with business and money mindset insights to keep you moving forward no matter what's going on around you. I'm your host, Deirdre Amies, the fun business and money coach and founder of Powered by Personality. Let's play. Hey there, and welcome back to the Fun Business, Fun Money podcast. Today is the 21st of March, 2023. It's a Tuesday, which means it's a longer coaching episode. And this one is a doozy. I don't know why I haven't shared this with you yet, but here it is now. It's also episode 25, and I feel like there should be streamers and poppers and all sorts of party things going on, because this feels like a significant milestone, doesn't it? Well, it does for me anyway. It's funny because my initial goal was to have enough topics for the first 20 episodes, and I've not exactly stuck to that list that I wrote because other ideas have come up which means there is still a lot more to talk about, not to mention all the other ideas that I'm going to come up with in the coming months and years. So we're going to have a good poke around in one of the most uncomfortable money topics. I mean, besides telling a colleague what you get paid and then causing an employee rebellion, that's most definitely an awkward moment. We're talking about money blocks, the phrase used to describe the things that are getting in the way between you and all the things that you actually want that money can help you achieve. I mean, right there is a hint that it's not about the money itself, right? Money is simply a tool that helps you do, be, or have what you want. Taking the action to bring more money to you, that's usually where the block is. Money blocks are rooted in our beliefs. It's the things that we've been taught to believe. Maybe we've learned them through experience, either our own or someone else's. We've somehow adopted a belief about it and made it our truth. And as we all know, the truth is subjective. Therefore, what you believe to be true, that can be changed with a different perspective. Working on your beliefs is at the heart of making a money breakthrough. So if you're not looking at and questioning what you believe, not just about money, but everything, you're pretty much guaranteed to stay right where you are in your financial situation now. And as I'm saying this, I'm reminded of a ranty post that someone shared on Facebook a while back along the lines of how offensive it is to imply that someone has money blocks. I could have taken offense to it because I do talk about money blocks. I'm doing it right now. And it's at the core of the work that I do. But it was also pretty obvious what it was really about. It was her own money blocks that were triggered in some way. It's not me or whoever inspired the post. It's you. I'm just shining a light in the dusty corners that people like to ignore and then complain about when they're struggling financially. What we actually should be annoyed about is the fact that money work isn't a one and done thing. You've got to keep working at it, damn it. Our beliefs about money are so deeply rooted, often from things that happened in early childhood. The whole process of dealing with money blocks is like the layers of an artichoke. You need to keep peeling back the leaves to get to the heart where the good stuff is. The more you do it, 
the better you get at it. It's quicker, more efficient, and it's repeatable. And I know a lot of people like to talk about onion layers, but I can't stand the smell or taste of raw onion. So I'm talking about artichokes instead. The money mindset work that I do with clients is a repeatable, logical process that helps to rewire your neural pathways in your brain so the new beliefs about money stick and they override the old ones. First, we uncover what's getting in your way, and that's what this episode's about. Then we take a different angle on it, a fresh perspective, so that you're seeing it in a new light. And from there, you can decide if the old belief is serving you, or if you'd rather embrace a new way of thinking and doing things that actually supports your financial growth. So what I've got for you today is a list of seven of the most common money blocks, which are specific to your business. I want to get on past the obvious stuff and get right to the practical business ones. So if one of these money blocks stands out for you, you can then dig a little deeper into why this is stopping your financial flow. It could be something from your childhood. And an important thing to mention before we dive into the details is what you actually want to achieve in life, business, whatever it is that you're doing. Because most, if not all of us, ultimately want one or more of four simple things. We want abundance, freedom, success, and wealth in whatever form that looks for you. It'll generally fit into one of those four categories. And you might think that abundance and wealth are the same thing, but you'd be wrong. Abundance is more general. It's things like health, community, connection, knowledge. It's more than enough of what you're seeking. Whereas wealth is specific to money and the accumulation of it. So there is a difference. What's stopping you from having more abundance, freedom, success, or wealth? In most cases, it's going to be one of these seven common money blocks in your business. So let's get into it. The first one, number one, is inconsistent money months. What I mean by that is sometimes you'll have one month up and then the next month way down. They can be wildly inconsistent depending on the type of activity or lack of that you're doing in the months prior. You need consistent activity, which leads to consistent money coming in. But it also has to be the right activity, not just busy work. Regardless of how much you're making, inconsistency can be a really scary problem because you don't know where the next income will come from or how much it's going to be. And there are a ton of ways that you can create more consistent income, most of which aren't even about the money. It's about the actions that you take that feel aligned and move you forward. So the second one is undercharging. This is a big one. And I'm going to do a full episode just on this one, undercharging. Most women aren't charging what they're worth, which impacts their ability to show up in an empowered way. Doing your best work, which we all like to do, becomes incredibly difficult because you're distracted, you're worrying about money, you know in your heart that you're selling yourself short. And that can have a crippling effect on your self esteem and self respect. And that emotional impact is why undercharging is not just about the money, but at the same time, it's all about the money. It's a bit of a weird one. That's why it's important to deal with it so that you can feel great about what you charge. And it's not hard at all. It's one of my favorite things that I work on with clients. There's a clear shift in their energy when someone feels empowered about their their pricing. They sit up taller. They speak a little louder. 
with a more confident tone. And that's really appealing. So number three, the third money block is being Teflon with money. This is where no matter how much money flows in, and you could be having amazing amounts of money flow in, most or all of it flows right back out. It doesn't stick around. There's always an unexpected bill or something that needs the money that you just earned. What you want instead is to be more like Velcro, having money stick rather than slide on out. Be saving money rather than constantly spending it. And that requires clear and strong boundaries and standards, not just for you. It's for your loved ones, your clients, and your team. This is a really big deal for nurturer money archetypes. It's the biggest shift that you can make towards your financial goals. You'd think that clear, strong boundaries would get in the way of the money flowing, but it's actually the opposite. You need to show money and everyone else that you're a confident leader who knows what she wants and doesn't want. And you then become Velcro rather than Teflon. The money sticks around. The fourth common money block in your business is sales conversations. This is another one that on the surface, it's not about money, but it really is about money. This is a money block where you're not closing sales very often. Your conversion rate could be and probably needs to be much higher. You want to feel more confident as you're having those sales conversations, whether it's in person, you know, actually talking to a person on, on Zoom or whatever, or even on in the DMs, as they say. It could be that the whole process of it is overwhelming and you're just not making the offer. Or maybe you don't get payment at the time when they say yes, because, and that's a problem because until they've actually paid, they're not a client. Whatever the variation in your sales conversations might be, you need a clear plan and a level of confidence to smash through this one. Having your sales conversation process mapped out so that you're following a repeatable process, that's a massive confidence boost. The more you do something, the better you get at it and you get comfortable with sales conversations, you can magically blow this money block away like dust. It's nothing. Money block number five is money power leaks. This one is where awkward money conversations are getting in your way and bringing down your vibe. There may be clients who owe you money. Maybe they're behind on their payments and you're having to chase them. It feels like a lot of hard work, and it's easy to feel resentful that money isn't easy for you to receive. That's the little story that starts playing in your mind. Bringing that power back to you is essential here. You're the leader in your business and in your life. And I can promise you, you're not going to die if you ask a client to get current with their payments or to set up an alternative plan. People do it all the time. And an action that I would suggest for you going forward is to have a clear refund and payment policy in place. You get to decide how flexible you want to be with it. But having that policy written down and on your website for everyone to see That benefits you and your clients. And just like in the sales conversations, awkward money conversations get a lot easier when you've got a script written out so that you can practice saying it out loud and then just go for it. You deserve to be paid on time for your work. If you want some more help with your money combos, make sure you check out last week's coaching episode number 23 titled How to Feel More Confident Talking About Money. 
Number six is clients not renewing. See, I told you this was specific to your business. You've done a great job promoting your offer. You got clients on board, they've paid, they're paying on a payment plan or in full, whatever it works. You've worked through your process with them and they want or need more. I actually think this is one of the least talked about parts of working with clients. What do you do next? If you don't know how to transition those clients to a new package or even to outline what the next level could look like, that's a huge block to money flowing in your business. And it may be that you only want that one offer, and that's perfectly fine. It could be down the track that you feel like you're ready to add something more. I've worked with some amazing people, and I most definitely wasn't ready to say goodbye when our time came to an end. I would have loved some kind of maintenance option to continue working with them. As you get to the last few sessions, you can take a moment to remind them that you've got, say, two sessions left. And you'd love to continue supporting them in a new container or a new arrangement, a new program, the next level, whatever it might be. Giving them that little heads up gives them time to consider the next step and to then continue paying you so that it becomes a seamless process. Because it's a whole lot easier to renew your existing clients into a new package even if it's at a different price, than it is to constantly be marketing and searching for new clients. It doesn't have to be complicated either. There are a ton of business models out there that you can implement as a support or supplement to the work you've already done together. And the last one, number seven, is clients' money stuff. Yes, even clients have their own money stuff. We all do. That stuff comes up at the most random times and situations. So knowing how to spot it and how to deal with it is crucial to your own money mindset. And that doesn't mean that you have to go and study money mindset or anything specific. This is about recognizing that you need to take a step back from the situation and see what's going on without any emotional charge. Most women have subconscious blocks to making a significant income or to keeping a significant portion of the money that they worked so hard to create. They feel like they need to give it and use it to support everyone else. No matter what's going on externally, it's the internal beliefs that are going to rule every single time because beliefs have that much power. You'll hear it in the objections that people have to working with you. Just don't take their money stuff on board. There's a high probability that you're not too expensive or however they happen to phrase it. Having the confidence to recognize that it's their money stuff, not yours, and not take that on board, that's really powerful. You can simply nod and smile, thank them for their time, and move on. You don't need to spend time and energy trying to convince anyone because you already know the value and impact of your work. So that's the seven common money blocks that you'll find in your business. Let me just recap those for you. The first one is inconsistent money months. The second one is undercharging. Number three is being Teflon with money. Number four is sales conversations. Number five, money power leaks, giving away your power and leadership. Number six is clients not renewing because you haven't got a clear process. And number seven is clients' money stuff. It's not you, it's them. So hopefully you can see that by stepping back from these and seeing them from a distance, they're things that are actually easy to resolve. Some of them take practice. Some need a simple reframe. 
some need boundaries, and some of them are simply recognizing that it's not you, it's them. Of course, all of this is what I work on with clients in both my coaching programs, Ignite, my private program, one-on-one, and in Sacred Money Archetypes, my group coaching program. So if you'd like my help at identifying and working on your money blocks, whether it's these business ones that we've talked about today or more general and personal ones, send me a DM. I'm at Fun Business Fun Money on both Facebook and Instagram. We'll have a quick chat in Messenger about your current situation and work out the best option for you. Or you can send an email to hello at deirdreamies.com. You'll find all the links in the description of this episode and in the show notes. I currently have space for a couple of new private clients in Ignite beginning in April 2023. And the next live round of Sacred Money Archetypes also begins in April on the 12th of April 2023. You'll join myself and the other group participants from around the world on live Zoom Q&A calls each week for nine weeks as we work through the Sacred Money Archetypes program together. We all have money blocks, whether we like it or not. How you want to deal with them is 100% up to you. You can ignore them and carry on, or you can play around with them and release the negative energy around money so that you can move forward and be financially awesome. So that's what I got for you today. Ditch the angst and weirdness around money in your business. Let those blocks go and start having more fun with it instead. Take care. Most definitely have fun, whatever you're doing. And I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for joining me. If you found this episode useful, make sure you hit that follow button on your chosen podcast platform so you get the notifications when each new episode goes live and you don't miss anything. If you know someone who would also get something from it, don't be shy, share it with them. One of the best things about being a business coach for online entrepreneurs is helping them make sense of their creative ideas and turn them into a simple, clear business system that actually makes money. A client recently described me as a castle building expert. You've got the big vision and some of the building materials already, but you don't quite know how to bring it all together into a solid foundation. Then I come along and I show you the blueprint that makes sense of it all. I love that analogy. And I'd love to show you your personalized blueprint, the one that's just right for you and your clients. But I can't do that until you join Ignite, my business and money coaching program. So head on over to deirdreamies.com forward slash Ignite for all the details. Fill out the application form And let's talk about building your castle in the simplest, easiest way possible. 